So one thing is that if you give ESAS before the onset of a permanent transfusion need, the average response rate will be twice as high as if you start it after they have started to become transfusion dependent. So that's one strategy. It will also last longer. Uh, when patients fail, it, it's a bit depending on whether they also have a progress of disease in terms of transforming to a more high-risk disease. Then, of course, they need other types of treatment. Um, chemotherapy is cited in transplant and what's, whatsoever. If they uh, still are in a low risk phase, it's usually because the stem cell pole has been completely invaded by the mutated clone. Uh, we have Luspatisept, of course, it's, it's licensed at the European uh, level. It still is not easy to get hold of because in many individual countries, it has not been approved with regard to the pricing. But Luspatisept could be an option, in particular in the SF3B1 mutated patients, perhaps also outside. Another interesting option is imetilstat that acts in a totally different way. If, if things holds now in, in novel studies, it seems to actually reduce the clone um, in comparison to remaining residual wild type cells. So that would be an action that is more like what you see with the uh, lenalidomide in del 5 q minus patients. So that may be something, it will not have a huge response rate, but it's definitely something that will be an option for other patients. There are many other uh, drugs in, in trial. I'm a bit, uh, yeah, let's see, let's see. Uh, just because it's shown in a phase one to two trial, it doesn't mean it will hold. So many other options have not really met with expectations, but I would say Luspartisept and Imetilstat are two new options that we have to find the role for.